Hi friends, how are you? By blessings to God, you are doing well. So this is Dr. Arthanjana, faculty member of PG Department of Business Management. As well as the coordinator of PG Department of Commerce, Fakin Mon University, Vasavir, Valasar, Odisha. Friends, once again, I am welcome to all of you to your channel, to my channel, Dr. A.B. Jena Classes. Friends, uh, once again, by taking into on your request, on your demand, so I have prepared the 72 vital MCQs from the business regulatory framework, I mean from the business law. So friends, I have prepared these 72 vital MCQs as for the prescribed syllabus of SSB PGT for the subject of commerce. So before discussion, I am wishing all the very, very best for your upcoming SSB PGT exemption for the subject of commerce. Fair be, as a discussion, very for the useful and fruitful logo, particularly that is the UGC net jare for the subject of commerce management, as well as for the uh, PhD and PG entrance for the subject of commerce and management, as well as as a discussion, very, very, very useful logo, particularly for the semester exemption, I mean for the BCom, uh, MCom, BBA, MBA, as well as uh, that is uh, MFC, as well as uh, that is the law subjects, as well as uh, for the uh, professional course like the chartered and uh, costing. So, uh, friends, without delay uh, our valuable time or without wasting our golden time, let's start uh, today's discussion one by one the 72 vital MCQs from the business law, I mean the business regulatory framework. So friends, it's the part 6, I have already uh, posted the 5 parts. Again, I am requesting to all of you, don't skip the video and I am requesting to all of you, so from beginning to till end you, you watch, so if any doubt or uh, with regard to the answer, if you find there, in kindly give your available comment and suggestion in the comment section. Friends, the first one MQ who has given the definition that every agreement and promise enforceable by law uh, is a contract, whether Sir Salman or Sir Frederick Pollock or Sir William Anson or Sir William Harry. So, friends, here B is the right option. So, friends, for your kind information, so kindly go through or visit to the playlist of uh, SSB as well as PGT Commerce and UGC Net JRF series. So there I have already discussed uh, in detail so far the business law or the business regulatory framework, uh, the various the concepts and uh, the meaning. So we will not discuss here in detail if we again we will repeat these concepts or the meaning. So definitely so this will be the lengthy video and definitely this video will be boring to you. So here friends, so B is the right option. So next one when the Ramdha Khenge, rules and regulations enacted by legislative are known as what? Whether law or act or statute or rules and regulations. So friends here, C is the right option. So rules and regulations enacted by legislative are known as what is this? It's the statutes. So next one when the Khenge, dash is not an element of contracts, whether enforceability by law or ethical value or contractual obligations or agreements. So here friends, B is the right option. So next one I'm thinking, which is sections of the Indian Contract Act 1872? So the Indian Contract Act is that is 1872 does discuss with respect to the competency or the contractual capacity of the parties, whether uh, section 11 or section 21 or section 31 or section 41. So friends, so A is the uh, right option. So friends, I have already given in the, that is the thumbnail. So what are the important, that is the MCQs will or we will discuss by covering or Indian contract at sale of goods at embellment and pledge that is the agency relationship and uh, so and from the limited partnership act so definitely you will get the import and MCQs from this this uh, topic so next one I'm thinking the agreement is not expressed so it is hum kya bolenge whether implied contract or wagering contract or void contract or voidable contract so friends here it's a is the right option 
सो नेक्स्ट वन हम देखेंगे इट इज ए कॉन्ट्रैक्ट दैट इज नॉट इनफोर्सेबल बाय लॉ एंड हैज नो लीगल सिग्निफिकेंस इज नोन एज व्हाट वेदर वैलिड कॉन्ट्रैक्ट और वेजरिंग कॉन्ट्रैक्ट और इट्स द वॉइड कॉन्ट्रैक्ट और वॉइडेबल कॉन्ट्रैक्ट सो फ्रेंड्स योर सी इज द राइट ऑप्शन इट इज ए कॉन्ट्रैक्ट दैट इज नॉट इनफोर्सेबल बाय लॉ एंड हैज नो लीगल सिग्निफिकेंस and it is known as what which types of contract it's the void contract so next one of the thing according to which sections of the indian contract act the communication of proposal is complete when it comes to the knowledge of the person to whom it is made and becomes aware of it whether section 3 or section 4 or section 9 or section 10 so friends here b is the right option सो नेक्स्ट वन देखेंगे एन एग्रीमेंट बाय एन इडियट इज व्हाट वेदर द वर्ड ऑफ इन ऑफ इन सेव और वर्ड और वर्डेबल और इन फोर्सेबिलिटी बाय लॉ सो फ्रेंड्स हियर ए इज द राइट ऑप्शन सो आई फ्रेंड्स हम लिटिल रिचर्च आगे वट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ वर्ड ऑफ इन सेव इट इज ए लीगल टर्म दैट मीन्स समथिंग इज इनवैलिड फ्रॉम द बिगनिंग और फ्रॉम द स्टार्ट ऑफ ए रिलेवेंट टाइम पीरियड it's the meaning of a word it's in the void of in seal so next one of the king an agreement which is made with a minor is whether on such type ka contract hai whether void of contract or void contract or unilateral contract or simple contract so friends here b is the right option so next one of the king which sections of indian contract act also clarify that a person who is usually on sound mind but occasionally of sound mind may take a contract when he is sound mind kaun sa section hoga other section 8 10 12 or it's the uh, 14 so friends here it's a, c is the right option so section 12 of the indian contract act also clarifies that a person who is on, usually on sound mind but occasionally of sound mind uh may take a contract when he is a sound mind so next one of the thing a free concept has been defined in which sections of the indian contract act whether it's a section 8 or 10 or 13 or 14 so friends here d is the right option so next one of the thing which section of the indian contract act uh so with or deals with the deals with on lawful object and consideration whether it's the section 18 20 23 30 so friends here c is the right option so section 23 of the indian contract act deals with on lawful object and consideration so next one of dekhenge uh, it's a the legal, uh, the legal maxim quid pro quo refers to what whether valid consideration by law b it's a something for or something or we can say this for that or agreement opposes to public policy or agreement for written by law friends here b is the right option so next one of the dekhenge the wagering agreements in india are considered as what whether unlawful agreements or valid uh, agreements or void agreements or voidable agreements so friends here c is the right option so i have friends some such a what is the meaning of a wagering contract wagering contract uh, agreement is a contract where one party pays money to another party based on the outcome of an uncertain event it's the meaning or matlab kya hai wagering agreement so next one we dekha according to which section of the indian partnership act uh, and the partners uh, in a firm can enter into an agreement not to engage in any business activity other than that of the firm whether it's a section 10 or section 11 or section 20 or section 21 so friends here b is the right option so indian partnership act is friends you have to remember 1932 so again hum chalta so आगे हम चर्चा करेंगे सो मेनी एम सी क्यूज फ्रॉम द लिमिटेड पार्टनरशिप एक्ट फ्रेंडली वर्ल्ड सो नेक्स्ट वन हम देखो हुई सेक्शन ऑफ द इंडियन कॉन्ट्रैक्ट आर डिस्क्राइज द अरेंजमेंट्स 
do the impossible acts whether section 26 or 36 or it's 46 or 56 so friends here d is the right option so section 56 of the indian contract Act describes the agreement uh, agreements to do the impossible acts next one of the king uh, suppose the makes a contract with rajaram to his house for rupees how 10 lakhs if they is able to get a bank loan for that amount, the contract is how kya bolenge? Whether contingent contract or wagering contract or valid contract or implied contract. So friends, here it is A is the right option. So next one of the contingent contracts are whether it's uncertain contracts or happening the future events or unconditional uh, contracts or it's the conditional contracts. So friends, here D is the right option of conti uh, con contingent contracts are uh, the conditional contracts by nature or in nature so next one of the thing as per which sections of indian contract right when two or more person have made a joint promise unless there is the uh, apparent intention to the contrary in the contract all joint promisers are lawful bound jointly fulfill the promise consa whether so section 40 or it's a 41 or 42 or 44 so friends here c is the right option so in this situation so section 42 of the indian contract act will be applicable so next one of the again the parties to a contract must either perform or offer to perform their obligations as per which sections of the indian contract act whether section 37 or 39 or 40 or 42 friends here a is the right option so in this uh, situation so section 37 of the indian contract act will be or is applicable so next one i'm taking which sections of indian contract act deals with uh, friends it's a typing error is there deals with the obligations of parties to contract whether section 7 or the 17 or 27 or 37 so friends here d is the right option so section 37 of the indian contract act deals with the, the obligations of a parties to contract so next one of the thing if a new contract is uh, substituted to place of existing contract whether it's the valid contract or alteration or it's a, that is the remission or no version so friends here d is the right option in this situation such types of contract from kya bolenge it's go it's a no version next one i'm looking which sections of indian contract does define the contingent contract whether section 30 or 31 or 37 or 38 so friends here b is the right option so section 31 of the indian contract does or defines the contingent contract so next one of the thing which sections of indian contract act does define the conditions that an agreement must be to be considered as a valid contract which section hoga whether it's a section 10 or 15 or 20 or 25 so friends here a is the right option in this situation section 10 of the indian contract act will be applicable i mean for towards the valid contract so next one of the thing which section of the indian contract uh, contract act does define discharge of contract by breach of a contract whether section 29 or 30 or 39 or 40 so friends here c is the right option so section 39 of the indian contract act does define the discharging or discharge the con of contract by breach of a contract so next one of the thing which is section of the indian contract act does deal with a discharge by mutual consent or agreement whether section 32 or 42 or 52 or it's a 62 so friends here d is the right option so section 62 of the indian contract act does deal with a, or the discharging by mutual consent or agreement so next one of the thing quasi contract is based on what whether principles of equity principles of justice or principles of good conscience d c all the above. so friends here d is the right option so these are the quasi contracts based on 
principles of equity, principles of justice, or principles of good conscience. So, friends, your D is the right option. <coughs> I am friends. हम चर्चा करेंगे मतलब क्या है क्वेश्चन कॉन्ट्रैक्ट सो क्वेश्चन कॉन्ट्रैक्ट इज ए लीगल ऑब्लिगेशन इंपोस्ड बाय लॉ टू प्रिवेंट अनजस्ट इनरिचमेंट एंड इट इज आल्सो नोन एज व्हाट इज दिस कॉन्ट्रैक्ट इंप्लाइड इन लॉ और कंस्ट्रक्टिव कॉन्ट्रैक्ट ये क्वेश्चन कॉन्ट्रैक्ट का मीनिंग सो नेक्स्ट वन हम देखेंगे इन इंडियन कॉन्ट्रैक्ट एक्ट और इन द इंडियन कॉन्ट्रैक्ट एक्ट द कांसेप्ट ऑफ ए क्वेश्चन कॉन्ट्रैक्ट इज मेंशन इन Where, whether it's the chapter B, section 68 to section 70, or chapter 5, section 68 to section 71. See, it's a chapter B, section 68 to section 72. D, it's a chapter 5, section 68 to section 73. So, friends, here C is the right option. So, next one, we will see a negative order by the court. Uh, which restrains a party from doing something is known as hum kya bolenge whether the point of merit or injunction or defamous defamous or no no for this so friends here it's b is the right option so next one hum dekhenge where a party is to claim the compensation in proportion to the work done by him it is possible by way of suit for Part whether point of merit or provisory injunction or penalty claim or breach of contract. So friends, here A is the right option. <coughs> Where a party is to claim the compensation in proportion to the work done by him, it is possible by way of a it's a of a suit for what is this point of merit. So next one, I'm looking at. Uh, in contract of guarantee, the person who gives the guarantee, he is known as whether, how do you say, whether creditor in, or indemnifier or surety or offerer. So friends, here C is the right option. So next one, I'm looking the person who promises to compensate for a loss suffered by another person, he is known as what, whether the creditor or indemnifier or guarantor or offerer. So friends, here B is the right option. So next one, I'm looking. Which section of Indian contract act does deal with the suits by a bailor or bailee against the wrong door? Whether section one hundred fifty six or one hundred sixty or one hundred seventy or one hundred eighty? So friends, here D is the right option. So section eighty of the Indian contract act deals with the suits by a bailor or bailee against the wrong door. So next one I'm looking at pledge means a things which is given as what whether security or loan or novation or consideration. So friends here A is the right option. So next one I'm looking at which section of Indian contract act does define the term bailment whether section one hundred eighteen or one hundred twenty eight or it's one hundred thirty eight or it's one hundred forty eight. So friends here D is the right option. So next one, I'm thinking the person who delivers the goods during the contract of bailment is known as how many people are there? Whether bailor or bailee or retainer or receiver. So friends, here A is the right option. So here the person delivering the goods is called what is this? It's the bailor, and the person to whom they are delivered is called what is this? It's the bailee. So friends, you have to remember meaning of a bailor and meaning of a Belly. So next one, I'm looking at the agency relationship, which is made retrospectively, is called what? Whether it's a, uh, an agency by uh, ratification or uh, an agency by estoppel or an agency by that is the ratification or non of this. So friends, here it's a uh, that is the C is the right option. So both A and uh, that is the C. Both are same. So, friends, here in this situation, A can be or C can be the right option for this MCQ. So, next one, I'm looking which sections of the Indian Contract Act define the rules governing the contracts of a payment, whether section 148 to 170 or sections 148 to 
टू वन हंड्रेड सेवेंटी वन और सेक्शन वन हंड्रेड फोर्टी एट टू सेवेंटी टू और वेदर वन हंड्रेड फोर्टी एट टू वन हंड्रेड सेवेंटी थ्री सो फ्रेंड्स योर बी इज द राइट ऑप्शन सो सेक्शन वन हंड्रेड फोर्टी एट टू वन हंड्रेड सेवेंटी वन ऑफ द इंडियन कॉन्ट्रैक्ट एक्ट डिफाइन द रूल्स गवर्निंग द कॉन्ट्रैक्ट्स ऑफ वेल मेड सो नेक्स्ट वन हम देखेंगे हुई सेक्शन ऑफ इंडियन कॉन्ट्रैक्ट एक्ट डिफाइन्स द रूल गवर्निंग द कॉन्ट्रैक्ट ऑफ प्लेस वेदर सेक्शन वन हंड्रेड सेवेंटी टू वन और सेवेंटी टू टू सेवेंटी और सेवे वन हंड्रेड सेवेंटी टू टू वन हंड्रेड सेवेंटी नाइन और इट्स वन हंड्रेड सेवेंटी टू टू वन हंड्रेड एट्टी वन सो फ्रेंड्स सो सी इज द राइट ऑप्शन सो नेक्स्ट वन हम देखेंगे हुई सेक्शन हुई सेक्शन ऑफ इंडियन कॉन्ट्रैक्ट एक्ट डील्स विथ द प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ स्टोपेन वेदर सेक्शन वन हंड्रेड टेन और वन हंड्रेड फिफ्टीन और वन हंड्रेड ट्वेंटी और वन हंड्रेड ट्वेंटी फाइव सो फ्रेंड्स यूर पी इज द राइट ऑप्शन सो फ्रेंड्स आए हम चर्चा करेंगे द मतलब मीनिंग क्या है स्टोपेल व्हाट इज दिस इट्स ए लीगल डिफेंस ये टूल व्हिच इज यूज टू एन सम वन रिनेस रिनेजेस और द कॉन्ट्रैक्ट डिक्स ए प्रीवियस एग्रीमेंट और क्लेम और द प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ स्टोपेल इज ए लीगल डॉक्ट्रिन दैट प्रिवेंट्स ए पर्सन फ्रॉम कॉन्ट्रैक्ट डिक्टिंग ए प्रीवियस स्टेटमेंट और एक्शन सो फ्रेंड्स याद रखिए सो द मीनिंग ऑफ प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ इज टू पेल सो नेक्स्ट वन ऑफ देखें सेल्स ऑफ गुड्स एक्ट फ्रेंड्स यू हाउ टू रिमेम्बर नाइनटीन थर्टी कॉन्टेन्स हाउ मेनी सेक्शन वेदर सिक्सटी टू सिक्सटी फोर और सिक्सटी सिक्स और सिक्सटी एट सो फ्रेंड्स यो सी इज द राइट ऑप्शन सो नेक्स्ट वन हम देखेंगे हुई जी सेक्शन ऑफ सेल ऑफ गुड्स एक्ट नाइनटीन थर्टी डिफाइन द टर्म गुड्स एज ऑल टाइप्स ऑफ मूवेबल प्रॉपर्टी एक्सेप्ट फॉर मनी एंड ऑक्शनेबल इट्स ए दैट इज द क्लेम सो इट्स ए टाइपिंग एरर इज देयर सो हियर आर सेक्शन टू एंड सबसेक्शन थ्री टू सबसेक्शन फाइव सी इट्स ए टू सबसेक्शन सेवेन डी इट्स ए सेक्शन टू एंड सबसेक्शन नाइन सो फ्रेंड्स हियर सी इज द राइट ऑप्शन सो सेक्शन टू एंड सबसेक्शन सेवेन ऑफ सेल ऑफ गुड्स एक्ट डिफाइन द टर्म गुड्स एज ऑल टाइप्स ऑफ मूवेबल प्रॉपर्टी एक्सेप्ट द मनी एंड इट्स द ऑप्शनेबल Claim. So C is the right option. So next one, now we see under the sale of goods act, the existing goods are classified whether as certain goods or on as certain goods or specified goods. D is the all the so friends here. D is the right option. So again, friends, I am requesting to all of you go to the playlist. So there I have already discussed in detail what is the meaning of as certain goods and on as certain goods and a specified goods. सो नेक्स्ट वन हम देखेंगे हुई सेक्शन ऑफ द सेल ऑफ गुड्स एक्ट डील्स विथ सेल एंड एग्रीमेंट टू सेल वेदर सेक्शन फोर और सिक्स और एट और टेन सो फ्रेंड्स योर ए इज द राइट ऑप्शन सो सेक्शन फोर ऑफ द सेल ऑफ गुड्स एक्ट डील्स विथ व्हाट सेल्स एंड एग्रीमेंट टू सेल्स सो नेक्स्ट वन हम देखेंगे हुई ने सेलर रंगफुली नेग्लेक्ट्स और रिफ्यूजेस टू डिलीवर द गुड्स टू बायर द बायर मे सी फॉर what whether it is the claim for compensation damages for non delivery or damages for non acceptance or non of ever so friends here it's a b is the right option so it's a so next one hum dekhenge in sale of goods act the doctrine of a caveat emptor is incorporated in which section or section 12 or 14 or 16 or 18 so friends here C is the right option. So, friends, I am just saying, you know, what is the meaning of a doctrine of a caveat emptor? So, it is a common law, um, common law principles which states that the buyer is responsible to examine property before purchasing, or in this, um, the phrase, uh, the caveat emptor translate to what is this? Let the buyer be aware. It's the meaning of a word, the doctrine of a caveat emptor. So next one, I'm thinking which types of uh, uh, which types of conditions and warranties are covered in the sale of a goods act, whether implied conditions and warranties only, B or C, express conditions and warranties only, C or C, partly implied and partly expressed conditions and partly warranties. So uh, D or C, both A and B. So friends here. it's a 
both that is a and b so implied conditions and warranties only uh, as well as so implied uh, conditions and warranties as well as the expressed conditions and warranties so d is here the right option so next one of the according to which sections of the sale of goods act the duty bounds the buyer to accept the goods and pay for the goods whether section 31 or 32 41 or 42 so friends here a is the right option so section 31 of the sale of goods act the duty bounds the buyer to accept the goods and pay the goods <coughs> next one on the king which are the examples of implied conditions in the sale of a goods act right to sell sell by description that is the sell by sample claim damages that is the mercantile quality uh, it's a uh, the fitness of um, for purposes or of wholesomeness. So friends, so select the right option from the following. All the above except 3. B, it's all the above except 4. C, it's all the above except 6. D, it's all the above. So friends, here it's a, B is the right option. Matla, that is the claim damage. So will not be the, or it's not the examples of implied conditions will come under what is this expressed that is the condition so uh, except for all are the examples of uh, the implied conditions in sale of uh, goods act so next one of the thing uh, indian contract act friends we know it's 1872 but the question may come came into force in which date or 1st june 1972 or 1st july it says 1872 or it's 1st August 1872 or it's 1st September 1872. Friends, so D is the right option. So next one on the thing uh, which sections of uh, the sale of a goods act define the term delivery of a goods whether section 50 or 53 or 57 or 59. So friends, so C is the right option so next one of the thing the limited partnership and the sorry limited liability partnership uh, act that is 2008 so friends you have to remember so lpp act is what is this it's a 2008 whereas the partnership act is 1932 how many has 80 section 14 chapters and 40 schedules b it's 80 sections 15 chapters and 5 schedules c it's 81 sections 14 uh, chapters and four schedules. D is the eight one sections, fifteen chapters and five schedules. So friends, here C is the right option. Do uh, I may repeat that now? So LPP Act 2018 has how many? That is the eighty one section, fourteen chapters and four schedules. So next one of the again. What is the minimum member and maximum number of partners in a LPP? in a LPP maximum two members sorry minimum two members and maximum ten members B it's a the minimum two members and maximum 20 number of partners C it's a uh, that is the minimum two members and no limit to maximum number of partners D it's the minimum five members and no limit to maximum number of partners so friends here C is the right option so minimum is a two members and there is no limit for the maximum number of partners in a LPP. So next one I'm looking at a limited liability, uh, I mean the LPP is what, whether it's the body corporate or legal entity separate from its partners, C it's a not a separate entity from its partner, D it's a both A and B. So friends, the right option is D, matlab A and A. That is the true statement with regard to the LPP. So, friends, it's a typing LLP that is the limited liability partnership. Firm. So, next one I'm looking at in India, a LLP shall be governed by the provisions of a contract, whether a corporate society act 1912 or limited liability partnership act. Uh, it's a LPP act 2008. Uh, 2008 or its Indian Partnership 1932 or Company Jack Indian Company Jack 2013. So, friends, here B is the right option. So, next one I'm looking how many designated partners are needed in LLP? 
whether at least two de designated partners or at least three de designated partners c it's at least four designated partners d it's at least five that is the uh, designated partner so friends here a is the right option a so minimum two next one of the can get a l p a LLP shall file the statement of accounts and solve, solvency in which prescribed form, whether section 4 or 6 or 8 or 10. So, friends, here C is the right option. A LLP shall file the statement of account and solvency in which in form 8. So, next one of the can get. A LLP shall file annual return with register within how many days? 15 days of closure of its financial year. B it's the 30 days of closure of its financial year. C it's the 45 days of closure of its financial year. D it's the 60 days of closure of its financial year. So friends, here D is the right option. So next one of the A LLP shall maintain the proper books of accounts with respect to its affairs for each year in which basis whether cash basis or accrual basis or double entry system DLC or the so friends here D is the right option. So these systems basis will be followed by LPP to maintain or to prepare the books of accounts. Next one on the again. Uh, who will sign or who shall sign the statement of accounts and solvency report status of LLP whether uh, by any one authorized partner on behalf of all partners B it's a that is the designated partners C it's a by all the partners D it's a register of the firm so friends here B is the right option <coughs> The designated partners will sign the statement of account and a solvency report of a LPP. So next one I am taking a L L L P keeps and preserves the books of accounts for how many years? Whether three years or five years or eight years or ten years. So friends here C is the right option. So next one I am taking a the audit of accounts of every LLP is not compulsory if it's a a annual turnover is less than 30 lakhs or its contribution is less than 20 lakhs in any financial year b its annual turnover is less than rupees 35 lakhs or its contribution is less than rupees 25 lakhs in any financial year c its annual turnover is less than rupees 40 lakhs or its contribution is less than rupees 50 lakhs uh, sorry 15 lakhs in any financial year d its annual turnover is less than rupees 40 lakhs or its contribution is less than rupees 25 lakhs in any financial year so friends your d is the right option d so next one i'm taking a llp will file its annual return in which form within 60 days of closure of a the financial year whether form 10 or 11 12 or 14 so friends here b is the right option so next one i'm taking every uh, every limited liability partnership llp must have at least two designated partners and at least one of them must be whether an indian resident or a person of foreign country or foreign institutional investors i mean the fias or an officer from ministry of corporate affairs so friends here a is the right option so next one i'm thinking what are the rights of an unpaid seller under the sale of a good site a retaining the position of goods b stopping goods in transit c it's the reselling the goods for it is suing the buyer for the price or damages. So friends, select the right option or correct option from the following. A. All the way except to 1. B. All the way except to 3. C. It is all the way except 4. D. It is all the above. So friends here. So D is the right option. So these are the rights of the unpaid seller under the sale of goods act. Uh, next one of them, the bailment of goods as a security for payment of a, of a debt 
or a performance of a promise is known as from kya bol lagya whether valid contract or wagering contract or pledge or bailment so friends here c is the right option so next one hum dekhenge leon means what whether it's a rights to purchase the goods or to retain the goods in his possession c it's a rights to sell the goods d it's a right to deliver the goods so friends here b is the right option so leon means what to retain the goods in his possession so next one hum dekhenge what are the rights of a bailor under the under a bailment contract a and uh, sorry first it's a right to compel performance b or second right to sue the damages three right to terminate the contract four it's a right to take back the goods uh, c uh, sorry five it's a right to receive the profits uh, six it's a right to compensation so friends select the right uh, correct option from the following all the above except one b it's all the above except three c uh, it's all the above except four d it's all the above so friends uh, so d is the right option i matlab so these are the rights of a bailor under a bailment contract so next one hum hum dekhenge uh, whether uh, it's a and the pledge is a contract of a what whether it's the guarantee or it's the mortgage or bailment or agency no doubt friends so c is the right option so i am friends dobara hum charcha karenge although i have already given in the previous video what is the meaning of a pledge in law a pledge is a contract where a debtor gives a credit of the goods or article as security for a debt or obligation and the debtor is called in this situation the pledger and the creditor is clause is called or known as a kya bolenge the pledge the go the good is called what is this the pledge so friends you have to remember it's these are the common question particularly in the board examination in ug so next one hum dekhenge xyz is a private insurance i mean the insurance company enters a con uh, into a contract with a ravi for fire insurance of ro fire insurance of ravi's house according to the terms xyz friends insurance company agrees to pay ravi an amount of rupees 10 lakh if his house is bought against the annual premium rupees how much it's a rupees 10000 so it is hum kya bolenge kaun sa type ka contract whether valid contract or void contract or implied contract or contingent contract so friends here d is the right option so next one hum dekhenge which are the rights of a finder of a goods first one right of leon or rights to sue for reward c it's a right to sell d or fourth one it's a no right to sue for a compensation so friends select the right options from the following all the above except first b it's all the above except three c it's all the above except four d it's all the above so friends so c or c is the right option so this is not the right right of a finder of goods otherwise so this one this one as well as this one are the rights of a, a finder of a goods so last but not not the least which one is not a duty of an agent first one duty to take commission second maintaining the confidentiality third it's a duty to exercise care and skill fourth one it's a duty to account five it avoiding the conflicts of interest Six, it's completing the tax diligently. So, friends, select the correct options from the following. First one, all the way except first. B, it's all the above except three. C, it's all the above except four. D, it's all the above. So, friends, so here A is the right option. So, friends, it is not the duty to take a commission. It is not the duty of an agent. What are rest? These are second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. So, these are the duties. of an agent so friends so these are all about the 72 vital mcqs from the business uh, regulatory framework i mean the business law so uh, i am hopeful that so you have lot a lot so uh, before concluding our discussion again i am wishing all the very very best for your upcoming that is ssc pgt exam as well as the board exam and other related exam so again i am requesting to all of you if you are not subscribed my channel kindly you subscribe it kindly you share it kindly you forward it so uh, friends i am waiting your available comment 
and a suggestion kindly give your available comment and suggestion in the comment section so thanks a lot to all of you